Here we go. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How is everyone today? Now, if there's anyone out there who is willing to join us, please, 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 we would love to have you come over. We would love to have you join us. We'd love for you to be a part of this event and this amazing occasion and this amazing experience in this amazing place. My name is Deborah Wilson, and I will be hosting the event for the day and introducing some amazing, amazing people. From people associated with ALS to these amazing celebrities that have come out here to participate in the ALS challenge. And what do they all have in common? Each and every one of them has been touched by ALS. A friend, a family member, a friend of a friend. There isn't anyone who isn't touched by ALS in one form or another. Even if you don't know someone personally, I'm sure each and every one of you have gone to YouTube and have seen the Ice Bucket Challenge. Now, you may not know what it means, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of a background, a quick background, a quick education on ALS. ALS was originally called Lou Gehrig's disease. For those of you that don't know who he was, he was a baseball player who lost his motor coordination, his muscles seized up, his body locked up, who could no longer move. A Yankee. And he was a New York Yankee, thank you. Yeah. Back then, doctors didn't know what to call it, there was no cure, and here we are in the 21st century, and there still is no cure. So, if you have ever seen the Ice Bucket Challenge, it is no stretch of the imagination and no coincidence whatsoever that when it first started, it was a young baseball player who ended up with ALS. And he wanted to do something that said, I will not give up. I will not die. Whether there is a cure or not, I'm going to bring awareness to not only the disease that I have, but others are suffering through and their families. And when he started this ice bucket challenge, no one knew specifically why the Ice Bucket Challenge, but if you think about this, this young man was the baseball captain for a team in Boston, for Boston University. And if you think about what ice buckets are over the head, it's always for the team captain who wins. It's always the students or the team that dumps it on the captain because that says, we won, we are victorious, we work together to make this happen, and so we're gonna dump it on you. So if you think about it as a metaphor, it means that as a team of people, as a community of people, we will not give up. There is a cure, and we will win. So here we go, and do the Ice Bucket Challenge. Don't just do it because you saw it on YouTube. Know that each and every one of you has a heart that says, whether I am affected or not, I know this disease can have a cure, and I am a winner because I'm a part of a larger community that is educated about what ALS is. And so I want to thank each and every one of you for participating, for coming today, and being a part of this amazing and momentous opportunity. And may this opportunity be an opportunity to come back year after year after year, to be educated, to grow, to create a community of people, to network about this disease, and spread it not only throughout the community in Los Angeles, throughout the community of every state, throughout the community of the world, so that truly, truly we can make a difference. I'd like to bring up, the first of which is the woman whose family owns the Corona Ranch. They've been here for decades and decades and decades, and not only have they donated the opportunity to have this amazing opportunity, this amazing experience today, but what she does and what her family does out here at the Corona Ranch is part of the proceeds go to various educational organizations here in the community, military organizations and nonprofits, and for children in school and students to learn about agriculture so that they one day will feed the world. And so without further ado, somebody who loves not only the land that she creates and creates nourishing foods from and nourishing opportunities for people to come during this time of year and go through mazes and play games and then use that money to educate and go right back out into the community so that this can keep going on in its 16-year tradition. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the woman, the goddess, who has volunteered this space for us to be even be here today on this fabulous and amazing day in Temecula, California, Miss Rose Corona. on behalf of myself and my family. Uh, Deborah went on and on about uh, this property and it's certainly not mine. And, um, I, I am the person that kind of gets my brother into all this trouble. And uh, the guy that makes this place look so great is my brother Steve. And he's sitting here with uh, He came in one day and said, I have, I have, to, I have to get going because I have to do the ice bucket challenge. I'm like, what? And she's like, well, and she explained it. And then she says, why don't we use ALS and raising funds? Why don't we use the corn maze to raise funds for ALS? Because like many of you, her family has been deeply touched by this disease. And we as a family have been touched by this disease. And that would be Maureen, my sister-in-law. So I'm going to lose it here. <laughs> but I want to thank all of you. This is a first year event for ALS. And I know that many of you came a long, long way to be here. All of you celebrities, all, all Cheryl Goldstein from the, West, uh, the Golden West chapter, Cassandra from August Quest, all of my wonderful sponsors who tried to make this happen for us. We are hoping to continue it. And my dad used to say, you know, it doesn't matter how small it takes, how small it starts off, all it takes is one. Nobody would have guessed that somebody dumping a bunch of ice on their head would have caused such a great resounding effect. And we're hoping we can follow in that tradition. I'm going to let other people talk more about what we, we need to learn about it. Deborah, thank you so much. Thank you all for coming this great direction, and we hope you enjoy it here. All right, we're going to keep this moving along. Next person that I'm going to bring up, I had the opportunity. Such a blessing, such a blessing to spend a moment with her. Because when I do these introductions, I do want to make them personal. They are important, and they're vital and necessary to know that when you connect to someone, that they're going to get up here and connect back to you. So I got a chance to sit with her. This woman just started um, with the uh, ALS Association just a little under four years ago. And how this came to be, there is no such thing as an accident, as far as I'm concerned. There is an opportunity for us to get to know the greatest self and have that come forth. And sometimes it has to be through something we consider a coincidence. And four years ago, she was just looking for a job. Just looking for a job, just needed to work, pay her bills, do her thing, have her life. And she decided to apply for the ALS Association, the local chapter, the ALS Golden West chapter. And little did she know that within a four year period, she would not only change her life, but she would have the opportunity to change the lives of thousands of people with ALS. And within that four year period, her commitment, her dedication, her love, her understanding, getting to know people with ALS, to be with them, to hold their hands, to be with their families, to get educated in such a way that it would change her life forever, she became the vice president of development for the local chapter of the ALS Association. And the more she knew, the more it was heart-wrenching for her, the more she knew, the more it became challenging for her. The more she knew, the more she became committed and dedicated. And she turned everything she knew that would have been a sadness for many people outside of the association, became her passion, her life's work, her power to empower those, including family members of those with ALS. And it was such an honor and a blessing to listen to somebody activate their life and say, this is my life's work, this is my dedication, to share my life with other people so that their families one day will know, without a doubt, that a cure is on its way. So with no further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to bring up the Vice President of Development for the local chapter of the Golden West chapter of ALS, uh, ALS Association, Ms. Cheryl Goldstein. You go, Goddess. Thank you very much. 
Um, good afternoon. I am I am very glad to be here today. Thank you, Deborah, for that introduction. And um, thank you, Rose, for inviting the Gold Month chapter. I don't know where I'm at. Thank you, Rose, for, for inviting the Gold Month chapter to be here today. So I, I have a few words to share with you about what is ALS. And I have a few words to share with you about what the chapter does. Um, so ALS is a fatal neurodegenerative disease. And it robs a person of the ability, if you didn't know this before, it robs a person of the ability to move, to speak, to swallow, and eventually to breathe. So as you can imagine, um, it's, a, it's a horrifying disease. And, and it's one that those of us in our normal lives, we might not go around thinking about what would it be like to not be able to move, to speak, to swallow, to breathe. It requires a lot of care, it requires a lot of help, it requires a lot of assistance. Most people who are diagnosed with ALS typically live two to five years. Um, it's, it's a disease that robs people of their lives quickly. Um, who gets ALS? ALS, everyone is at risk. Women and men of all ages are diagnosed with ALS. Um, veterans are at two times the risk of being diagnosed with ALS. Doesn't matter what branch of the military or which um, which era they served in, it doesn't matter whether they are overseas or never see any combat. Veterans are twice as likely to be diagnosed with this disease. Um, little is known about the causes of this disease, and, there, and, and it's been said, there are no effective treatments and there is no cure. The one FDA approved treatment for ALS um, will extend life for two to four months. But the one thing that research shows is that <coughs> People with ALS, when provided with proactive, robust, and multidisciplinary care, will live longer and better with this disease. And so we're all about how to help people live with this disease, and so that's what the Golden West chapter is here to do. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you, I have these notes, I like to read it because I don't like to miss a word. Um, the mission of our organization is to lead the fight to treat and cure ALS by providing compassionate care and support, advancing global research, and promoting public policy initiatives that benefit the ALS community. So, everything the Golden West Chapter does promotes a model of care and a research system that advances the search for treatments and a cure. From providing care services like a, a professional regional care manager who will come to somebody's home and share with them what this disease is, how it operates, how to modify your house, what to get prepared for, to support groups, to equipment loans. People need durable medical equipment. They need wheelchairs and shower chairs and a augmentative communication equipment. When you lose the ability to speak, thank God we live in, a, in an age where there's computers and apps and stuff that can help people use eye gaze technology to communicate with their loved ones or doctors to, and to be connected with the world. Um, we also are affiliated with 13 multidisciplinary clinics throughout our service area, um, and we provide access to those, and we also produce education events and community events. And so on the care services side, we try and be as helpful and supportive to the ALS community as we can. But at the public policy level, at the state and the federal level, we are working to make sure that dollars are being directed to ALS research. Can you hear me? Um, the dollars are being directed to ALS research. Um, here in California, you may have noticed on your state tax checkoff. Thanks. On your state tax checkoff, um, on the state tax return, you have an opportunity to check off if you want to donate to ALS research. That program has generated $500,000 just out of California alone dedicated to ALS research. And at the federal level, I told you that diagnosed twice as often as civilians. Uh, veterans, because of this connection, they are um, afforded 100% disability um, once they're diagnosed with ALS, and that has happened because of our public policy program. So all of these things, all of the things that we do are necessary to achieve our vision of ALS. But here's my pop quiz for you. Um, where, you get to be interactive with me, where do you think a cure for ALS is going to be found? This is pretty important. We want a cure. Where's it going to be found? Anybody? 
have guesses. Go ahead. I see it. I you mean it. where in the body or like where in the world? Where in the world? Where do you think? Who's going to do it? How's it going to happen? Germany. You think in Germany. Okay, that's a good answer. Salk Institute. Salk Institute. Okay, we're being specific. Anybody else? Anybody else? So here's, here's what I have to say about it. Um, the cure for ALS is going to be found in a person who is living with ALS, but it's cured from this disease. And so there's nothing that we are going to get done in terms of this fight without people who are living with ALS and their families in partnership with them because of them and for them is how we are going to cure this disease. It's going to take the scientists working with the test tubes and doing the things they do with microscopes and being brilliant. But it's also going to take an organized community that understands how to participate in the research process, how to generate the dollars. There's something called the Ice Bucket Challenge, um, and it's going to take all of us caring about that. So I know you guys heard about an Ice Bucket Challenge. I think we're going to have a chance to do it today. I see Kate, Kate Minter's Ice Bucket Challenge video. It's fun to watch. You haven't seen it. And I'm just in conclusion going to say, 